Our top story today, Justin, Boeing whistleblower John Barnett's cause of death is finally revealed. We'll be discussing this and so much more here on the Gateway Pundits Week in Review. My name is Elijah Schaefer, and this is the Gateway Pundits Week in Review, where we cover the top five stories over the last 24 hours. Let's get into this. Christina Lila reports, it turns out that as previously reported, Boeing whistleblower John Barnett was found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound inside his vehicle outside a hotel in Charleston, South Carolina, as he was testifying against the airplane company. John Barnett was found dead on March 9th on day three of his deposition against Boeing. He worked for Boeing for 32 years until he retired in 2017. Quote, Barnett's death came during a break in depositions in a whistleblower retaliation suit where he alleged under pressure workers were deliberately fitting substandard parts to aircraft on the assembly line. Charleston police investigated after Barnett was found in his truck suffering from a gunshot wound to the head. It goes on to say here that a suicide note was reportedly found next to John Barnett, according to the Daily Mail. Barnett was reportedly found with a silver handgun in his hand and his finger on the trigger. A suicide note was also found on the passenger side of the vehicle. Barnett's lawyers asked for a thorough probe because they didn't believe he committed suicide. John was in the midst of a deposition in his whistleblower case, which finally was nearing the end, Barnett's lawyer said. According to the New York Post, he was in very good spirits and was really looking forward to putting this phase of his life behind him and moving on. According to Charleston County Coroner Report, Barnett died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. All findings were consistent with a self-inflicted gunshot wound, the reporter from Charleston County Coroner Bobby Joe O'Neill reads. Barnett's manner is best deemed suicide, the coroner wrote. Um, yeah, that's the end of it. So we're just supposed to believe that this sec- this is two whistleblowers, by the way, just magically killed themselves. I don't buy this. These people are professionals, these three-letter agencies. I don't want to be conspiratorial here, but I'm going to be. I think he was killed. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Speaking of other stories, Dirty Brad Raffensperger and Gabe Sterling are caught rigging the 2024 election against Donald Trump using the same tricks as last time. Jim Hoff reports. In November of 2020, we obviously published on a little-known YouTube video with only about 50 views at the time. In the video that was posted in August of 2020, Gabriel Sterling joins in to discuss a number of things regarding the election process. Gabriel Sterling was appointed the COO of the Secretary of State of Office by Brad Raffensperger shortly after Raffensperger was elected to the position in November of 2018. Sterling as COO would be in charge of budgetary, human resources, and administrative operations for the Secretary of State's office. Sterling strangely also had been referred to in multiple media accounts as Georgia's statewide voting system implementation manager. Starting at the seven minute mark, Sterling brags about expanding the emergency rule to provide for drop boxes to go through the entire election cycle now. Again, this video was published in 2020. It goes on to say that at the eight minute mark, Sterling brags about hiring election poll workers from the ACLU to work the election in the state. Now he goes on to say, we allowed for early scanning of ballots, those things come out of the SEB. And then we work with the county elections officials directly to train them. He goes on to explain more. You can watch the video there. How in the world did this far-left radical Gabe Sterling get hired as a Georgia statewide voting systems manager under Brad Raffensperger? And what kind of Republican would partner with the ACLU to hire election workers to process absentee ballots? In August 2023, investigative journalist Paul Sperry echoed our earlier reporting and confirmed via POIA records that Fulton County officials in 2020 deputized hundreds of anti-Trump Democrats from the ACLU and gave them the power to process absentee ballots. Well, it turns out that even the recent years, as we go down here, I want to go down a little further. uh, In Philadelphia, they locked out all Republican election observers from counting the room for days. Now, if you want to read more about this, it explains that they're planning on doing the exact same thing. Georgia Secretary of State Board Raffensperger and his sidekick Gabe Sterling are already working with source-funded groups to ensure that only leftist election workers will be hired in Georgia this year. Are you paying attention? They're planning on repeating the same cycle once again. Call it legal rigging. It's corruption at the highest degree. I'm getting sick of it. I'd love to know your thoughts on what you think about using these methods to hire these radical activists to basically rig the election in a way that can't be traced back to any corruption because we've just accepted this is what our country is at this point. Now, Christina Lila reports in another story, I can no longer in good conscience continue to represent this administration, 
Biden Interior Department staffer abruptly designs. Here's what it says. The Interior Department staffer abruptly resigned on Wednesday in protest over the Biden regime's stance on the Israel-Gaza war. Lily Greenberg, call a Jewish special assistant and the chief of staff in the Department of Interior, resigned in protest and blasted Joe Biden in a phone call with the AP. In a phone interview with the Associated Press, call blasted Joe Biden's comments on Israel and Jews, saying in an interview with the Associated Press, Call pointed to comments by Biden, including at a White House Hanukkah event, where he said, we're there, no Israel, there wouldn't be a Jew in the world who was safe. And at that event at Washington's Holocaust Memorial last week, in which said the October 7th Hamas-led attacks that triggered the war were driven by an ancient desire to wipe out the Jewish people. Goes on to say here directly, he is making Jews the face of the American war machine, and this is so deeply wrong. Call told the AP, noting that the ancestors of hers were killed by state-sponsored violence. In a resignation letter, Call said that she was initially excited to join the Biden administration. However, I can no longer in good conscience continue to represent the administration, she wrote in a letter. You can read the full letter there at thegatewaypundit.com. Well, you win some and you lose some, right? I have no other commentary on that. Uh, second to last story of this report, a home intruder with long rap sheet was cut to pieces by a Florida man after shooting an innocent woman in the face. Colin Linebarger reports. A low-life career criminal paid the ultimate price after breaking into a Florida man's home and shooting his wife. WSH reported that Highland County police officers responded to a suspicious incident at a home in Avon Park at roughly 8.30 p.m. Once deputies arrived on the scene, they found a male and female with severe injuries. Both were revealed to be 69 years old. In addition to the wounded couple, cops found that there was a dead man not related to the couple inside the residence. Police identified the person as 62-year-old Lindsey Glenn and said he broke into the residence and shot the female victim in the face. Highlands County Sheriff Paul Blackman told reporters that Glenn gained entry into the couple's home under a scam that involved the woman's job as a notary. Further explanation is after the male victim witnessed Glenn try to kill his wife, Blackman said the man grabbed a seven-inch garden knife and went to work on the intruder. Glenn ended up dying brutally as a result. Blackman revealed that the thug was cut to pieces and very much deceased when the deputies found him. The sheriffs thanked the male victim for his heroic actions. I would like to commend the male victim for his bravery and quick action in defending his wife and their home. Blackman said the investigation is still very active and ongoing. Blackman went on to call the male victim who was retired from Pride Industries as an upstanding citizen. It is unknown whether the victim and the alleged perpetrator knew each other before the attack. Well, they say don't mess with Texas, but also don't mess with Floridians. They do have your stand your ground laws there as well. And it's very important not to get in the way of people. We pray for the female's quick recovery. Lastly, President Trump eviscerates Joe Biden and hilarious keeps failing music videos on Truth Social. Alicia Powell reports. Former President Donald Trump is calling attention to Joe Biden's deteriorating cognitive functioning by pinning a parody music video featuring the ailing White House occupant falling over and wandering around to his Truth Social account on Friday. The video, a parody of rock artist Tom Petty's famous tune, Free Fallen, features Biden falling down on stage, tripping down the steps of Air Force One and aimlessly wandering around as the lyrics point out, Biden keeps falling. You can watch the video there, although it says it's been disabled, so we can't really watch it. The video created by comedian and host of Fox News Saturday Night Jimmy Fallon is going viral as people, what is that, Fallon? Fila? Uh, is is going viral as people across the mock the installed commander in chief's embarrassing falls and gaffes. The song is oh it's I guess it is Jimmy Fallon. I thought it was late night Jimmy Fallon, but I guess it is Saturday night Jimmy Fallon. Fela. All right, this is confusing. The song is from Fela's album The More You Joe, produced by Come On Man Records. It goes on to say here directly the lyrics to the song read: He's an old guy. He has dementia. Can't lead us. And the country is screwed. Tells some big lies, barely speaks English, like I am on this, this one story, and sniffs children and their mom's hair too. Goes the wrong way when he leaves his speeches, gets lost each day. In the White House yard, all the Dems say that we should reelect him. Well, I guess we should. How can he win when he's walking his hard and Joe keeps keeps falling? Yeah, he keeps falling, keeps falling, and Joe keeps falling. Thank you so much for watching the Gateway Pundits Week in Review, where we cover the top five stories of the last 24 hours. My name is Elijah Schaefer. Thank you so much. Don't forget to share these videos. Leave me your comments below. Have a great rest of the week and may God bless the United States of America. I'm signing out.